Hey, hey everyone. This is Pastor Tony from Grace Fellowship in Christ Jesus Church. You see, we have a picture tonight uh, with our Bible study. It's a little different. It's trying to just do audio, so we'll see how it goes. If you are connecting, would you go ahead and say amen um, so that we know that you're hearing the Bible study? All right, you guys. Well, tonight we're going to talk about this is our faith school. Um, we are going to talk about remembrance, how the Lord remembers. And uh, so we, uh, let's see, is that Tammy? Tammy, are you on Bible study yet? Praise the Lord. I think with the, we kind of started a little late. Um, so here we go. We're going to, let's open it in prayer. Heavenly Father, right now, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for this study tonight. We thank you that you're going to have your way. You're going to uh, teach us some new things about your word. Uh, I want to just stay out of the way so, Lord, that you can have your way through your word tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord tonight? Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to turn into to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. Thank you, Lord. Donald says you're, you're here. Can you hear us okay, Donald? Just let me know. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to turn to 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1. Um, let's go there. Praise the Lord. And we're going to talk about Hannah. She wanted to have a child really bad. And so she uh, prayed, and the Lord uh, answered her prayers. Um, mm. So we're going to start in 1 Samuel chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 3. And it says, Year after year, this man went up from the, his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh. It says, The two sons of Eli were, the two sons of Eli, uh, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came... For Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, uh, Pina, and to all, all of her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. Now, he, you know, he's saying that the Lord closed her womb. And, you know, that's their way of perceiving that why they couldn't have children. And sometimes people will say, you know, well, I guess it's not God's will that I have a child or God's will for this or that. But, you know, what we've said many times is the word of God, it promises us certain things. It promises that God hears our prayers and he answers our prayers. And so we keep praying and we keep on declaring and we keep confessing the word of God and we receive what the word of God says. And so here, her husband, he had two wives. Back then they could do that, so don't freak out. Um, and his first wife, the one wife could have children, but Hannah couldn't, but she wanted to have children. And it says the, the, the other wife would uh, provoke her and make fun of her because she couldn't have children. And so let's go on a little bit farther. Um, it says, it says, this went on year after year. This is verse 7. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. As she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head." And so what she was doing is she was making a promise to God that, Lord, if you give me a son, I'm going to dedicate him to you. You know, she and what's interesting about this is she wanted a son so bad, you know, but she was willing to give up that son if the Lord would bless her. And a lot of times, you know, the, the, the main thing that we need to realize is the reason why God blesses us is so that we can be a blessing. 
You know, he doesn't bless us so that we just hold on to it. He blesses us so that we can be a blessing. And, you know, blessings come in all different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. You know, a blessing could be peace. A blessing could be money. It could be whatever it is. But what do you do with that blessing? You use it for the glory of God. You Mm -hmm. use it to honor him. You know, some people may have a gift of teaching. Well, are you using that to honor God? Mm-hmm. Uh, some people have a gift, you know, they're, they love to teach children. Are you using that to honor God? Mm-hmm. Are you using your gift? Uh, maybe you play an instrument. Are you using it to honor God? Um, whatever it is, are we doing this to honor God? And even our uh, jobs, our secular jobs, yes. we can use it to honor God. And, and there's different ways of doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, you could do it in a sense that at my job, I want to be a light. I want to let them know about Jesus. I want to live Jesus in front of them mm-hmm. so that they will want what I have. So that's what's important. You know, the reason why God blesses us is so that we can be a blessing. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. And so let's go on. So she makes this vow to God. Um, I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And then in verse 12, as she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk. Now I take it, you know, she's praying in the spirit. You know, some people have the prayer language and that's great. And they pray out loud with the prayer language. But I feel like here she's praying in her heart and she's praying in the spirit where there was no words heard. And, you know, there'll be times that I'll pray to the Lord about a certain thing, and I was at um, what I'm saying. And if you see, I saw it kind of disconnect, y'all, so hang in there. I know the devil is just fighting this being taught tonight. He's been fighting us getting online, and but we're winning because the Word of God is going out. Mm -hmm. And so... um, You know, and I'll pray in the spirit. I'll pray in my prayer language at times, but also I'll talk to the Lord in my heart, you know, then pray and talk to him in the spirit because I don't want to say certain things out in the open because the devil can hear it and he can attack it. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to be careful about sharing what visions that God has given you. There comes a time that you need to share those things, but there's a time that you need to wait. There's a waiting time that, you know what, Lord is talking to me about a certain thing, and so I'm praying about it, but I don't want to tell a whole lot of people because, number one, I don't want them to talk against what God is showing me <laughs> because he's given me faith for that, and you may not have the faith for it. And you're going, well, Pastor Tony, that's kind of crazy. How can you be believing God for that? Well, because God put that in my heart to believe him for that. Mm -hmm. And the same for those listening right now. God has put something on your heart, whether it's your healing, whether it's breakthrough, whatever it is. And it seems impossible because the doctor has given you a report that seems impossible. Or other people are talking about you going, how now, Ricky, what do you mean God is going to do this for you? Well, God has given Ricky faith for that. And just because it doesn't make sense to me doesn't mean God didn't promise him that. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is, Lord, I'm going to stand in agreement with him. And I'm going to pray, Lord, that you will answer his prayers. And, you know, prayers, the things that God has shown us doesn't always have to make sense. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is we get into this place of reasoning it. You know, okay, this is how God's going to do it. He's going to do it this way. Um, You know, he's going to do it this way and this way and this way. And what happens is we get into works and how to trying to help God make it happen instead of saying, okay, Lord, I'm trusting you for this. I'm trusting you for my healing Um, or whatever it is. So let's continue on here. You know, she's praying and there's no words coming out. And Eli is watching this. But he's going, listen to what he says. And so there was no words coming. There was no voice that could be heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of the wine. See, he didn't understand what was going on. So he just assumed she was drunk. You know, just because I don't understand what God is saying to you or what he's saying to me and how exactly it's going to happen doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And don't assume just because you haven't received your breakthrough or your blessing or your healing that you're not going to receive it. 
You know, because what you're doing is you're getting in your head and you're reasoning it out instead of trusting God for it. Mm-hmm. You know, trusting God. His word says this. You know, Lord, you said, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff at work, maybe. You're dealing with stuff or people are saying stuff about you. Well, Lord, I thank you that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Your word says that. And that you said that every word spoken against me, I will prove wrong because of my heritage in the Lord. And we talked about that before. And so, you know what, what I've learned through the years is don't let people control you with what they say mm-hmm. or what they think, right? When the Lord is giving you a word, and a word might be just you have something inside you saying, it's going to be okay, Raymond. Every, Ryan, it's going to be okay. Well, how can you say that it's going to be okay, everybody, when it's crazy around me? But you have a peace. Mm-hmm. God gives you peace. And I don't have to figure out if it's going to be all right or not. I trust the Lord that he's going to fight my battle. Mm-hmm. He's going to take care of it. He's going to make this happen that he's promised me. And you know what God loves to do? He loves to do things that are so impossible for man because only he can get the credit mm-hmm. for when it happens. Right? Yes. So if you're in a situation right now or circumstance or whatever it is, and it seems so impossible for it to come to pass or happen, then you need to say, well, praise God. This is an opportunity for God to show up and show out mm-hmm. in your situation. Yes. Right? Yes. And so I'm here tonight to encourage you. And, and there's a reason the devil must be fighting this for a reason tonight. And as we get into this, we're talking about remembrance. God is a God of remembrance. God remembers the things that you say and you do. He remembers the things that you've sacrificed. You know, like even Peter said, Lord, you know what? We've given up everything to follow you. We've given up everything to follow you. And the Lord says, all those things, I'm paraphrasing, all those things that you've given up, that God will restore a hundred times back to you Mm -hmm. in this day and age in this time you know and a lot of people think well when i you know that song when we all get to heaven (laughs) what a glorious day it will be well yeah it's gonna be glorious but you know what jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly here on this earth Mm -hmm. he promised us he's the the lord of the breakthrough So he tells her in Hannah, he says, how long will you keep on uh, getting drunk? Get rid of the wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I'm a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I am pouring out my soul to the Lord. Mm. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I've been praying here out of uh, of my great anguish and grief. Mm. So she's seeking the Lord. She's crying out to the Lord with everything within her. Have you ever gotten to a place where yes. you just like, Lord, I need you so bad. I am just in this place right now. It's really bad. Lord, I need you. I need you to show up and show up. I need this breakthrough, mm-hmm. Lord. I need this breakthrough. I need, Lord, you to uh, cause a blessing to take place right now, Lord. I'm trusting you for it. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's doing. She's crying out for a child. Think about it. Her, the, the other wife is having children, all kinds of children. She can't. And, but she's crying out to God for a child. She made a vow to God. You know, and that's interesting because we'll make a vow to God. God, if you get me out of this, you know, we do a lot of that, don't we? Yes. And how quickly we forget God once he does. But let's go on and see what happens with Hannah. And says she says, I've been praying out of my great anguish and grief. In verse 17, Eli answered, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. So first going back to Eli, what he says, Eli answered, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant what you have asked of him. What did he do? He came in agreement with her prayer request. Mm -hmm. He says, may the God of Israel grant you what you've asked. And then she goes on to say, she said, may your servant find favor in your eyes then she went her uh, her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Why? Because she took him at his word, didn't she? Mm-hmm. 
He said, may God grant your request. She took it and says, I receive that. You know, that's a lot of times what we do is we don't respond to the prayer. When God says, I'm going to do this for you. Yeah, Lord, I've asked this. Now I'm going to respond. Thank you, Lord, for my whatever it is, my breakthrough, whatever. You respond to the word and then you go on. And, and that's what she's doing. She's no longer downcast. She's now basically her spirit has been lifted because she's taken the man of God at his word saying, feeling that God is going to grant her request. And the Bible even says, pray believing that you've received it, mm-hmm. already received it, mm-hmm. you know? And I think we miss out a lot because we're still seeking God for something and there's nothing wrong to seek him for it, but we need to believe that we've received it. I don't know. And I don't have to reason it. I don't have to say, well, it's going to go square one, square two, square three, whatever it is. It doesn't necessarily have to go from square one to square two. It could go from square one to square ten right away. Mm -hmm. Let God be God. And you just get to a place of receiving and believing God's word. Believe that you received it. Does that make sense tonight? Yes. And so let's go on a little bit farther. Um, In... uh, Early the next morning, in verse 19, they arose and worshiped before the Lord. This is her and her husband and the family. They woke up and began to worship the Lord. Well, when you get a word of the Lord, you've asked him about it. You believe that you received it. Then start worshiping him. Continue, you know, worship him. It says early the next morning, they arose and worshiped before the Lord. And then they went back to their homes at Ramah. Elkanah lay with, his, with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered... The Lord remembered. It says the Lord remembered her. He remembered her praying. He Mm. remembered the vow. He remembered what Samuel had told her that go in peace. May God grant your request. And it says right here, it says the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. Now I want to go back to a place right here in verse 20. So in the course of time. It didn't happen that night. It says in the course of time. So just because you haven't received what you believe God for yet doesn't mean you're going to get it. So don't start cursing the promise and the blessing by saying, well, I guess I'm not going to get it. I guess it wasn't God's will, right? Mm -hmm. Just rejoice in the Lord. And it says the Lord remembered Hannah and she conceived and gave birth to a son. Uh, in a matter of time, it says she named him Samuel, saying, because they asked the Lord for him. She asked the Lord for him. When the man Elkanah went up with his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Not only did the Lord remember his uh, remember her she remembered her vow to the lord mm-hmm. you know so why is the lord sp- going to bless you so that you can be a blessing yes we forget about that you know well i just want a lot of money so that i can be comfortable well there's nothing wrong with that but you need to use that money to be a blessing also to other people go ahead you just reminded me of something i, I was praying to the lord about my my job and, and stuff like that and and uh, this was a, a few years ago, and I got this really big contract, and, and I, got, I was real excited about it, and it, it involved a lot of money. And I was in my mind already spending the money. <laughs> and I heard the Lord say to me, don't forget about me. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing that so clearly. Don't forget about me. Yeah. I put him in the back of the bus, and I was thinking about what I was going to do with it, but he came to the forefront and said, don't forget about me. Yeah. And, and it, I got even more happy because that's where it came from. Yeah, and it honors God. Yes. And, you know, the devil, there's been many times in the same instances where I've received a financial blessing. And the, and the same thing, you start planning and the devil go, oh, no, you don't. God's good. You don't need to do anything. And it's like, uh-uh, I'm putting God first because he made the way. Yes. You know, that's the reason why I got blessed because God made the way. Yes. So I need to be a blessing to him. Mm-hmm. So let's go on. 
And so she says to him, so in the verse 24, it says, after he was weaned, she took the boy with a young, uh, as young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an effort of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. So she brings him to Eli, the one it was Eli, I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake, I thought it was Samuel, but Samuel is a little baby here. But Eli was the one who says, may the Lord grant your request. Mm -hmm. And so then when she gets blessed, then she takes him back to Eli to present him to the Lord. And she lets Eli know, this is the one, this is the baby I prayed to the Lord for, and the Lord blessed me with him. So she's giving him a testimony of how the Lord had answered her prayer and that what he had said, may the Lord grant your request, and the Lord did. That's why it's important to tell people about when somebody says, hey, I'm praying for you, and you pray for somebody, it's important to let them know, hey, your prayer really blessed me. This is what happened. Um, it was interesting because um, last weekend, you know, I've been just seeking the Lord for some direction about some things, and somebody out of the blue I haven't heard from in probably a year or two had texted me and said, hey, you've been on my mind a lot for the last week. Is it, are everything okay? And I said, well, and I let him know, you know what? You heard from the Lord and that I'm at seeking the Lord for some direction about some stuff. I didn't have to tell him what I was praying about, but I wanted to confirm that he heard from the Lord. That's why it's important to let somebody know, hey, you have heard from the Lord. That's why he put you on my heart. So that it encourages them to let them know that they're hearing from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's a two-way street here that we need to uh, encourage one another and also let each other know that, hey, you are hearing from the Lord. Let's go on mm -hmm. um, in chapter 2. So, you know, she tells Eli she's bringing the child there. He's really young, and she's dedicating him there. Um, let's go to verse 18 of chapter 2. It says, But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. He was wearing a priestly garment, and he was ministering unto the Lord. Each year his mother made him a little robe and took it to him. I could just see this, you know. The mother makes him a little robe, takes a, this little robe to him as he's there, right? <laughs> it says, Each year his mother made him a little robe and took it uh, to him when, he, when she went up with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. So what is he doing? He's praying blessing over her mm -hmm. because she's a blessing. And see, that's the thing about being a blessing to somebody. They will turn around and, and speak a blessing over you or they'll say, God bless you. And, you know, and the pow there's power in the blessing. There's power in the acknowledgement. Remember, with the tongue, it says, with the tongue, there's life or death or blessings or curses. Mm -hmm. So what you say to somebody, you know, I was praying for Pastor Jan Sunday, um, Raymond, and the Lord put it on your heart to say something to her. Yeah, and see, you heard from the Lord, and so what you did is not only did it encourage her, it encouraged me that I was hearing from the Lord. So, you know, and you confirm that with the word you, you were given her. And it says, so he's making a declaration. He's declaring over, may the Lord give you children by this woman. He's talking to Elkanah, the husband, to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. Then they would go home and the Lord was gracious to Hannah. She conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Her promise, her blessing mm -hmm. is continuing on being prepared to be a blessing. And as he's being prepared, the Lord blesses Hannah with more children. 
and come and you need to understand Samuel was the one who anointed Saul to be the king and he anointed David to be the king so God used Samuel as a prophet um, and this is the one Hannah had prayed for a child she couldn't have a child but she prayed to the Lord and she made a vow I would give dedicate him to the Lord and because of her vow and her faithfulness to do this God used this child to be a mighty blessing and we read about him there's two books written about Samuel in the Bible mm-hmm. and so you know what I'm here to tell you is the Lord will remember what he has promised you And that's why it's important to remind the Lord, and the Lord hasn't forgotten you, but what it does, it reminds you what you have prayed to the Lord, and you're bringing it out in the open as you're you're putting a demand on the spirit realm. You know what, Lord, you said, if I, you know, Lord, you said that you would do this for me. Lord, you promised me this, and I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to continue to declare your praises. I'm going to continue to stand and believing that I've received what you've already promised me. I'm not going to let the devil get in my head and cause me to start speaking against what God has promised me. Well, it hasn't happened yet. Doesn't mean it won't happen. I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to stand on his promise. I'm going to believe for it to happen. And again, it may seem impossible. It may seem like there's no way that it could happen. I'm here to tell you, yes way. When God gives you a promise, he will fulfill it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. And he promises. There's all these promises in his word for us that we will have peace. That, you know, he gives us peace not as the world gives. He gives us peace that lasts. You know, he fights our battles for us. He goes before us and he makes a way. Mm-hmm. You know, there's people in the world right now with everything going on in the world right now. And, and people are, you know, all this stuff. And the devil wants us to be caught up in all the bickering and fighting and all this stuff. And it's a distraction from what God has promised us. And so when we're distracted with those things, we forget about what God has promised us. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to stand on his word and he remembers his word like he did for Hannah. He remembered his word. I I got a question. Sure. When I hear this story all the time, I imagine uh, Eli is uh, is seeing Hannah in the temple. And and, and that's that's my question. Did it work? Because it says that Eli saw her at the doorpost. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the question is... uh, which was she in the temple? Which I don't think women were allowed back then. I might be wrong, but did, did Eli see her in the temple? Uh, as, as as I imagine, or 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 or, or at the opening of it. You know, she's by herself, obviously, and normally, you know, the men were the one who were acknowledged. Mm-hmm. You know, the women back then were just, you know, they weren't looked at of anything of high esteem. It was the men. You know, when a woman's husband died, you know, and if she didn't have any children or any sons, you know, it was the male that took the blessing. And, you know, so, but that is a good, that's a good way of putting it. She was by herself. Where was her husband? You know, but she was at the temple, whether it was inside or outside at the doorpost or whatever. She was there crying out to the Lord for what she wanted the Lord for. And then Eli was happened to be there, the priest, and he acknowledges her and he makes that declaration. May the Lord bless you, you know, uh, grant you your request. So there's another thing, you know, just because you're alone at times doesn't mean God isn't with you. And, you know, I, I was telling somebody this today about, you know, when I grew up, I didn't have a whole lot of friends. I, I was a loner. I, you know, had very few friends. I was by myself a lot. But when I look back at it now, I can see where the Lord worked in that, where he could speak to me. I didn't have all the other stuff to distract me. Um, and so just because what seems like what the devil's doing to you doesn't mean... It, the Bible says God can turn the things that the devil means for harm for your good. And so, but the point of it is, she was crying out to the Lord. She wanted God to answer her prayer. She was determined. You know, she was praying out of her spirit. She was, you know, it says out of her anguish. She was seeking God for answer prayer. 
You know, are we seeking the Lord for answered prayer? Or do we give up too soon? Or do we say, well, if it's God's will, I'll have this. And I understand what you're trying to say, but there's not really a whole lot of faith in something. Well, if it's God's will, I'll receive this. Right. It's passive faith. And, you know, and it takes faith to move a mountain, right? It's not passive faith. I like that. Passive faith. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess if it's God's will, this mountain will move out of my way. Well, that there's no faith to that. You know, and let's just say the mountain moves out of your way. Well, what are you going to say now? Well, I guess the wind blew the mountain out of the way. Because you don't even have faith for God to move the mountain, right? Because the first says, have faith in God and speak to the mountain. And so we got to get past this passive faith like that. And stop saying, well, if it's God's will, I shall be healed. Well, the Bible says, by his stripes, I have been made whole. Yes. Well, if it's God's will, then I will prosper. Well, the Bible says that he desires that we prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of scripture about prosperity. But, you know, too, I know that sometimes people pervert it by saying, well, I'm going to be the richest person in the world. I'm going to have all this money. And again, it's not, there's nothing wrong of having a lot of money. The problem is the love of money yes. is the root of all evil. What are you going to do with that billions of dollars? Well, I'm going to build me a palace. I'm going to have 12 pools. I'm going to have all these rooms. What are you going to do with 12 pools in your mansion or whatever? Well, I'm just going to have them. Well, why don't you think about being a blessing to people out there that need, to, need help to be a blessing, right? And so here, Hannah's her blessing that she cried out to the Lord would bless a lot of people. God would use him. And we still read about Samuel to this day. Because Hannah was determined to receive her blessing. When we're determined, your blessing can affect not only you, but other people around you. And that's what it should do anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've said this over and over. It is important for you to get a blessing. It's important for you to get healed. It is important for you to get a breakthrough. So other people will see it and believe in your God that he answers Amen. prayers. Amen. Well, let's go to uh, Malachi 3. We're talking about remembrance tonight. Is everybody okay tonight? Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Malachi 3. And I know when I kid a lot of people about this, don't worry, we're not going to take <laughs> up the offering. We're going a little bit farther than Malachi 3.10 where everybody reads. And, you know, and I want to start there. I'm going to just start there because, don't worry, we're not taking an offering. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to start, you know, Malachi 3.8. And it, let me see. Um, and let me just read this. It says, will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do I? we rob you in tithes and offerings? You're under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this. So I want to just set the stage here. God was telling them, you put me first, I'll take care of you. Now, I'm just saying that in general right now. I'm talking about whether it's your money, whether it's your time, whether it's your service, whether it's your gift. Put God first, then he'll take care of the rest. And so then he goes on to say, he says, test me in this, prove me in this, put me first and prove me in this. And he says, see if I will not uh, throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out such a, so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent the pest from devouring your crops. He says, I'm going to take care of your crops. Go to page 1060. We have the same Bible, I think. I think that's pretty close. It says, he says, um, see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out such a blessing you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent the pest from drowning your crops. When the enemy comes to attack your finances, attack your home or whatever it is, God will step in and intervene because you put him first. And, I, and right now I'm talking about general that he's going to, he'll take care of you. And, and, and then I, I talk about finances as well. But here it says, um, I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Because you put me first, I'll take care of your land. Now, going to verse 13, and this is where I wanted to kind of 
uh, get into. It says, you have said harsh things against me, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? Now, he's talking to the Israelites. You know, and and the thing of it is, when God's speaking to Israel, and, you know, we can learn some lessons from it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not under the law. Don't get me wrong. We're not under Mm -hmm. the law. And the tithing isn't under the law. It was before the law. So just keep that in mind. But that's not what we're talking about tonight. It says, you have said harsh things against me, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? You have said it is fruitile to serve God. What did we gain by carrying out his requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty? But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly the evildoers prosper and even those who challenge God escape. And he's saying, you know, be careful what you say because you're speaking against God. And he, the people were saying, you know, they were in rebellion anyway. You know, but we can get into rebellion. You know, I, sometimes I have to have an attitude adjustment. I've had a few of them this week, I have to say. Some stuff's been going on. But but you know what? God is always, he always says, Tony, keep your attitude in check. Mm-hmm. You were talking about that a few weeks ago, I think, Raven. We all go through uh, things, and we have to just put our attitude in check. Because if we're not careful, we're going to start stepping over in rebellion. And rebellion is witchcraft. Because you're rebelling. And uh, here it says, you've said harsh things against me. You've said it is fruitile to, to serve the Lord. What do we gain by this? You know, and what they're going to do is they're going to get exactly what they say. Those who are speaking against God. But here, let's, there's good news. Don't worry, y'all. <laughs> Go on in verse 16. Uh, actually, yes, yeah, 16. Then those who feared the Lord, or reverent the Lord, talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. When you start talking about how good the Lord is, and how he has intervened, or how he made a way where there seems to be no way, or whatever it is, you know what? It says here, the Lord hears, he listened and heard, and listen what he did. And a scroll of remembrance was written in the presence concerning, in his presence, concerning those who reverent him and honor his name. There's something about talking about the Lord and honoring him. And the Lord listens to it and he writes a a scroll of remembrance in his presence. What is a scroll of remembrance? So that he can look at it and remember what they were saying about me. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, look, Raymond was talking about how good I was. Earlier, Tony was talking about how the Lord had blessed him in this situation. And, Ray, and, and Ryan said this, or Yolanda had said this, or whoever's listening. When you talk about how good the Lord has been to you, you open yourself up for blessings. You open yourself up for breakthrough. And I'm not saying we're buying blessings. I'm not saying all that. But what you're doing, there's something about appreciating a gift. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like you gave a gift to somebody and, you you know, you just thought about this and you gave this gift and they said nothing about it. They didn't appreciate it. And, you know, and there's something about it. And it makes me feel like I don't want to do it again. They don't appreciate what I gave them or, you know, did for them. Why would I want to do it again? Right. Mm -hmm. And the same with God. You know, God is not like a man. But think about this. If you never tell him thank you for what he's done for you, I mean, come on, appreciate what he's been doing for you. Just because you haven't seen your breakthrough or your blessing yet doesn't mean you're gonna not going to see it. Appreciate. Thank him for the little blessings along the way. Thank him for the breakthrough along the way. Thank you today, Lord, that you gave me peace. Thank you, Lord, for helping me keep my mouth shut. When I just wanted to go off on somebody. Go ahead. Um, I know we're not in the New Testament yet, but where it says here about the scroll of remembrance. and Was it Paul that said that, I know I'm paraphrasing, but uh, basically the only thing I'm going to boast about is boast about the Lord? Yep, he forgot about everything else. Yeah. You know, the only thing I'm going to uh, talk about is boasting in the Lord. And, you know, Paul was very educated. Mm -hmm. Paul Paul says, I just humble myself. He says, I'm coming in weakness. I'm coming with not knowing anything. He was a Pharisee. He was very educated. And he was very strong. Remember, he was going around 
pulling out Christians and having them thrown in jail. Paul wasn't weak in the natural, but Paul humbled himself to make himself weak before the Lord, that he knew nothing but Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. That's all he wanted people to know about what he knew about. So, and it says here, it says, The scroll of remembrance was written in the presence, uh, uh, in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name or reverenced the Lord. They will be mine, says the Lord Almighty. In the day when I make up my treasure possession, I will spare them just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. And you will again, listen to this, and you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, mm -hmm. between those who serve God and those who do not. And just because, and you know, we're none of us are perfect. Are you doing okay over there, Ryan? <laughs> All right, none of us are perfect. God isn't looking for perfect people. He's looking for willing people. And we all are on a journey. We're working things out. God's working things out, I should say. But just because you think that wicked people are getting away with murder, so to speak, and I'm just saying stuff, you know, one day it'll catch up to you. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's doing you wrong, don't let that discourage you from serving the Lord and honoring him. Mm -hmm. It says here, those who spoke about how good the Lord was, he wrote a scroll of remembrance. And it says there'll be a day, there'll be a distinction between the righteous and the wicked. God will separate the goat from the sheep, so to speak. And so mm. I want to just continue to honor God. You know, just just to honor him because he's been so good to me. Mm -hmm. He's been so good to me. And he's been good to all of us. Hasn't he? Yes. I, sure. <laughs> you know, we're talking about the scroll of remembrances. God keeps, let's see, he gave me this one time and um, I told it to Terry Ludlow and he gave me the scripture that backed that up. It was set up. He's got, oh, help me, Lord. <laughs> he, he's got a book of promises he's made to us. Mm -hmm. He keeps a book of promises that we have made to him. And the scripture goes, if I can quote it verbatim, it's better to not make a, a, a vow than a promise. So no, you can't better, keep it. I can't get it out. Right. It's better to not make a promise than to make a vow to God and not keep it. Mm -hmm. So, book of promises. Amen. And remember, he'll bring it to your remembrance too, of yeah. what you promised. Yes. So, you know, I mean, the main thing is keep honoring the Lord. He will remember all you've done. You know, he never forgets anything, like you're saying, Ricky. He doesn't forget those vows. He doesn't forget what you've been through. He doesn't forget about um, how you felt last week, you know, when nobody else was there for you. He will remember that. Let's go to Acts 10. Um, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I'm all turned around. Acts 10. Praise God. I need, just I wanted the word to get out. I see Lucky's on. Good evening, Lucky. Praise God. Hello. So Acts chapter 10. Praise God. Verse 1. Uh, it says, At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a satyrian, in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all of his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. He wasn't even a Jew. He was a Gentile. And yet he sought the Lord. It says, one day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. <laughs> It'd be a little startling when it? somebody shows up out of nowhere. It says, what is it, Lord, he asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Mm. You know, God remembered what he did you know even the little things god will remember it said cornelius stared at him, and then it says before god now send me to uh, send men to joppa to bring back a man named simon who is called peter he is staying with simon the tanner 
whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of the attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. Let's go on. About noon the following day, as they were on the journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into the deep trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet uh, being let down to the earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. Then the voice told him, Get up, Peter, and kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to remember that. And this happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While well, Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Now, I want you to understand, God is speaking to Cornelius. He's speaking to Peter. He's preparing for something to happen that God is going to use. So, remember, when the Lord begins to speak to you about something, you start feeling like something is in your heart or there's something there's something telling me to do something get ready and 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 open your heart for the lord um to give you direction um let's go to verse 23 it says then peter invited the men into the house to be his guests the next day peter started out with them and some of the the brothers from joppa went along the following day he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. They were preparing for Peter to come because God told Peter uh, to go with them. Now let's continue on. It says, As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I'm only a man myself. Uh, talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or visit him. But God has shown me that I should not call any man, listen to what he's saying, any man impure and unclean. Mm -hmm. See, God was giving him a vision about these animals, mm -hmm. but really what it was representing is, you know, he's saying here, God told him to not call any man unclean. And this is a word to us. Just because somebody looks a certain way that you may not agree with doesn't mean that God can't touch them or save them. Are you with me? Yes. So be careful about judging people on the outside. Hallelujah. Let's go on again. Let's go on a little bit more. So when I was sent for you, I came without raising any objections. May I ask why you've sent me? Cornelius answered, Four days ago I was in my house praying at this hour, at three in the afternoon, suddenly, and I think I'm going to skip over a little bit. Um, let's go to, oh no, let's go on. Suddenly, at three in the afternoon, suddenly a man in uh, shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. There's the remembrance. Mm -hmm. God remembered what you did. It says, four days ago I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon, the tanner, who lives. And then it goes on. He's telling the whole story. And then verse 34 um, it says, Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true is it, it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him or reverence him and do what is right. Uh, you know the message God sent to the people of Israel telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Mm -hmm. You know what it has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism of John the 
uh, that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. So the point of this is that God had called Peter to go to Cornelius to tell the gospel, to share the good news, so that they would believe. Let's go to verse 44. We're almost finished, y'all. It says, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers, these are the Jews, Believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. So my point of it is, when you honor God, he's going to honor you. And he's going to use you for his glory so other people can be blessed through the message like you are. And don't take it for granted. You know, God will put people in your pathway that you can make a difference. It could be somebody thinking of suicide. It could be somebody, uh, you know, that you can make a difference to prevent them from doing that. Or just losing hope. Hey, nobody likes me. It's, but you know what? If you show, give them attention and share love, then that will help them be encouraged mm-hmm. to continue on. So remember, the, remember, the Lord remembers. You know, that's easier said than done. We'll go to your worksheet, and we're going to end this tonight with 2 Timothy 1.5. And this is Paul talking to Timothy. He was young in the Lord. And it says, I remember, remember your genuine faith, for you, uh, for you share the faith that first, uh, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. And then it says, this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and a sound mind or self-discipline. So Paul is encouraging Timothy, he's saying, Timothy, I want to remind you of the gift of God that is in you to stir it up, to fan it. How do you fan it? You begin to use it, that gift, to be a blessing to others, a word of encouragement or um praying for somebody or whatever it is that you don't know how it will affect their lives forever Mm -hmm. you know when i was in fourth grade i remember i had a teacher and we uh, would take turns sitting at a table at lunch with her um like several students every lunchtime we had lunch in her classroom and and i remember she every lunchtime you would look at her and all she did she bowed her head to pray she didn't say a word. She prayed, with, and I'll never forget. I can see it to this day how she bowed her head to pray, and and it it made such a difference. I mean, I remember to this day that I didn't know really. I knew it was prayer, but I didn't grow up in church, so I don't have the concept of all of it. But there was something inside me saying she's praying, mm-hmm. and it touched me. It affected me to this day. Mm-hmm. And the same for you. You could do something that could affect somebody. You may not see it, but it can affect somebody forever and ever in a good way. So don't take for granted that, you know, saying hi to somebody at the grocery store or, you know, at the jogging path or whatever it is, God can use you to make a difference, Ryan. Mm -hmm. And he probably has more than you realize it. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I know for me, for instance, because I was a loner, I'm drawn to the people that are loners because I don't want them to feel what I felt Mm -hmm. back then. You know, I I always look for the underdogs. You know, I'm drawn more to the underdogs than the people that are popular or people who act like they got it all together because not everybody has it all together Mm -hmm. anyway. And but I'm drawn to them because I don't want anybody to feel what I felt. I want people to feel welcome. 
You know, that's why at our church, we, we are a church for everyone. You know, everyone's welcome. That's why we're not labeled any type of church, but a church that is of Jesus. We worship Jesus. And so that everyone's welcome to come to our church and feel welcome. And that's the way it should be. You know, it's interesting how, and I'm going to close, it's interesting after everything that God has done for us and showed us so much mercy, and I see this in so many churchgoers, is they don't show a lack of mercy or grace. Really, after all the mercy that God has shown you and the grace that God has shown you and that you don't want to show grace and mercy to people, you know what? It's only by the grace of God I'm not on the street mm-hmm. or in a ditch or dead or whatever. It's by the grace of God that I'm here today. Mm-hmm. And who am I not to show mercy to anybody or to judge somebody for you know anything it's the grace of god it's done wonders in my life and brought me through so much i believe he's brought us all through so much yes. mm-hmm. and so it's important to show people grace and mercy and love you know that's why again when i see people by themselves i go and reach out and say hey how's it going because it, it's easier for me now because i realize it um, to, you know, go to somebody and encourage them. So, you know, tonight the, the teaching is remembrance. And we need to remember and remember that what you prayed, God, if you know what, believe God for it. Well, how do I know it's God's will? Well, read the word of God and look and find yourself in Scripture. You know, find yourself. How, who do you relate to in the Bible? Who stands out the most to you? You know, hopefully it's not Satan, <laughs> you know, but it's, but it's Moses or Paul or Timothy. You know, I, in my early days of coming into the church, the one that stood out to me was David because David was a worshiper and I loved to worship. That's where I started in the church in worship. Mm-hmm. And so I related to David. And then when you read the Psalms, how David messed up. And David did things, you know, but God still loved him and God still used him. He was a man after God's own heart. Mm. So find yourself in the Bible. Look for yourself in one of the stories and one of the, the people in the Bible and read about how God used them and that if, and know that as God uses them, he can use you as well. Mm-hmm. And, and watch how God turned their lives around and how God used them. And then, you know, and so it becomes more personal to you in how God can use you. Yes. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray tonight. I hope everybody got something out of this tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you that your word is going out and accomplishing its purpose. We thank you, Lord, that you have gone before your word tonight because you are the word. And your word is planted in good fertile soil in each and every one's heart tonight. I thank you that as the uh, remembrance, the scroll of remembrance is written of how we talk about the goodness of the Lord. I thank you that you're going to remember all the things that we've done to honor you, Lord. So, Lord, for those that need prayer tonight, we send your word of healing. We send your word of deliverance. We send your word of breakthrough right now. And we declare Jesus is Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we're believing that we have received what we have asked for. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.